If you brought your Bibles this morning, I want you to turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. The title of my message this morning is, Why Do We Need the Holy Spirit? And I'm going to tell you what has happened over the last three or four days that has led me to go this direction. I got an email from a lady this week. She does not go to our church, but she said, I watch you faithfully online every Sunday. And she said, I am struggling right now with so many addictions, just bound by sin. And she said, I I just know in my heart that as soon as I can get my act together, as soon as I can clean up my life, I believe the Holy Spirit's going to start using me and he's going to fill me. And when I read that email, I nearly started crying. It affected me that badly. I had a grandmother come in this week, and she said, almost verbatim, you guys, she said, Gwen, I know the hand of God is on my grandson. My grandson has the call of God on his life, but he's so messed up. He's hanging out with the wrong crowd. He's doing the wrong things. He's bound. He's struggling with addictions. But I know whenever he grows up, whenever he gets his act together, she used the same verbiage, whenever he gets his act together, I just know that the Lord's going to use him and the Holy Spirit's going to feel him. And I'm going to tell you what I told both of them. That has happened to me repeatedly this week. And I'm going to tell you what I told both of them. I told the lady that emailed me. I said, hey, listen up. I am so glad that you're watching online. If you ever get an opportunity to come to a live service, I hope you will. Come come and meet me. Look me up because I want to meet you. I want to pray for you. But I want you to be encouraged. I want you to know this. The Holy Spirit does his best work when we invite him into yucky, nasty, messy situations. If we're relying on our own willpower, we're all bound for hell. But the Holy Spirit, that's his job. He empowers us. He enables us. He equips us to overcome sin, to live a victorious and overcoming life. If we were doing it in our own strength, in our own power, we couldn't do it. But that's what the Holy Spirit's for. The Holy Spirit don't need you to get your act together. He don't need you to clean yourself up. That's what God sent him to do. He's come to convict the world of sin, to, to bring, um, to bring life, to bring power. He will empower us. And so I hope if you're struggling this morning, if you feel like you're bound, don't believe the misconception that, well, when I get everything together, the Holy Spirit will, no, the Holy Spirit will come right now in the midst of your struggles, in the midst of your bondage, and he'll set you free, and he'll empower you to live a victorious life. Sometimes I think the enemy, the, the devil understands the power of the Holy Spirit more than the Christian, more than the Christian people do. And so the enemy, if he can distract us, if he can cause us to believe a misconception or believe a lie, he'll, he'll do it. And so that's what I want to preach about this morning. Why do we need the Holy Spirit? What is his purpose I mean, we, we read about him thousands of years ago in scripture, but today is April 30th, 2023, and why do we need the Holy Spirit? And that's what I want us to discuss this morning, because I think for many people, when I even mention the Holy Spirit, people start getting uncomfortable. People start, it raises more questions than it answers. People have this awkwardness. This mystics, just, ooh, the Holy Spirit, he scares me. I'm afraid. I'm afraid if I invite him into my life, I'm afraid if I give him access to my life, he's going to do something to me. He's going to make me act a way I don't want to act. When the truth is, he'll keep you from acting a fool. That's what the Holy Spirit does. He ain't going to make you act like a fool. He'll prevent you from acting like a fool. But there's so much... There's so much misconception, so much misrepresentation when it comes to the Holy Spirit. I read an article, this has been way, a few years back, but it was in Charisma Magazine. And they said if the Holy Spirit were to withdraw his presence completely from American churches, 90% of those churches would continue on as though nothing had happened. We depend on the Holy Spirit so little that if he departed, if he pulled his presence from us, we wouldn't even notice. Is he gone? I didn't even, when did he leave? I didn't even know the difference. That's sad. That's sad. 
The Holy Spirit is the most forgotten and ignored person of the Trinity. And he is a part of the Godhead. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And it is the Holy Spirit who is the most misunderstood and misrepresented person of the Trinity. The Holy Spirit is not a feeling. He is not a sensation. He is not goosebumps. The Holy Spirit, did you know he has a personality? Did you know he has feelings? According to Ephesians 4.30, he can be grieved. Did you know you can grieve the Holy Spirit? According to Hebrews 10.29, he can be insulted. Do you know that the things we say, the things we do, our behavior, the ways we act, we can grieve and insult and offend the Holy Spirit. According to Romans, the Holy Spirit intercedes for us. He prays. Do you know he's praying for you? The Holy Spirit's praying for you. He's interceding for you. According to Acts, which we're going to read here in just a few minutes, he speaks. He literally has a voice and he speaks to us. According to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, he gives us gifts. He gives us gifts. The Holy Spirit is referred to in Scripture as a mighty, rushing wind. But he is not wind. The Holy Spirit is referenced as a dove that descended from heaven and fell on Jesus after his baptism. But the Holy Spirit is not a bird. In Acts chapter 2, the Holy Spirit is described as tongues of fire. But the Holy Spirit is not a fire. Some denominations limit the Holy Spirit to a prayer language. They believe that if you speak in tongues, that is the Holy Spirit. Listen to me carefully. I believe in the power of speaking in tongues. I do speak in tongues. It is a supernatural, divine, heavenly language that also has benefits and rewards. But if you think the Holy Spirit is nothing but a prayer language, you are severely limiting his abilities and the benefits that he has in your life. The Holy Spirit is so much more than just a prayer language. The Holy Spirit is a person of the Trinity. He is part of the Godhead. And the first thing that you and I need to do if we want to honor him is stop calling him it. He is a person. He is part of the Godhead. He is not a thing that we tolerate. He is someone that we should celebrate. And so this morning, I just want to try to convey to you the purpose, some of the benefits of the Holy Spirit. You know, I don't know about you, but I have, I tend to have this mental image of what I think God looks like. Um, and it may be because of what I've seen depicted in movies or on cartoons or something, but I imagine he's this really majestic, kingly uh, old man with gray hair and a beard and, and just kind of sits on his throne with his scepter. That, that's what I see as God the Father. That's the mental image I have of him. I have a mental image of Jesus where he's got brown eyes and br long brown hair and a brown beard. That's what I see. That's the mental image I have of Jesus. But what does the Holy Spirit look like? I don't know. I'm clueless. When it comes to the Holy Spirit, I have no mental image of what I think he looks like. And that's why I understand that we could teach on the Holy Spirit for 52 Sundays a year and never scratch the surface of what he is and who he is and what he does. The Holy Spirit is so deep and so broad and there's no limit to him. And so this morning, I just want to specifically address this question what is the purpose of the Holy Spirit in my life, and why do I need him? 1 Corinthians chapter 2, I'm going to be reading verses 9 through 12. I'm reading out of NIV, and this is what it says. It is written, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, and no human mind has conceived the things that God has prepared for those who love him. 
Most of us stop right there. Most of us could quote that verse. No eye has seen, no ear has heard, and no mind can conceive the things God's prepared for us. And we just stop right there. But if you keep reading, it says, but these things have been revealed to us by the Spirit. These things, we have knowledge of these through the Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. For who knows a person's thoughts except their own spirit within them? In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. We have re- what we have received is not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, so that we may understand what God has freely given us. I want you to look at verse 10. These are the things God has revealed to us by His Spirit. One of the purposes of the Holy Spirit, one of the reasons you should desire to have him in your life is he will reveal things to you. He will show you things that your mama don't know, that your husband don't know, that your wife don't know. He'll show you things that only the mind of God, that only the Spirit of God knows, and he wants to reveal those things to us. Did you know that God has a plan for you? God has a destiny for you. God has giftings and, and talents. But he, if you don't know that, you, you may not even be using them. And God wants to reveal those things to you through his Holy Spirit. He's like our own little personal CIA, our central intelligent agent, and he's working on our behalf. I don't need the Holy Spirit to teach me things that are written in God's word. I can read that. What I need the Holy Spirit to help me with is the specific details of my life. Do you know the Word of God, the Bible, is a blueprint? It's a blueprint for how we can navigate our life, for how we can live our life, but it speaks in generalities. For marriage, it tells us don't be unequally yoked. So a believer shouldn't marry an unbeliever. You're, just cause, you're, you're literally setting yourself up for trouble when you do that. The Bible gives us generalities, but it doesn't say marry him and not him. And I need the Holy Spirit to speak to my life about should I take this job or that job? Should I marry him or should I marry him? Lord, do I go here or do I go there? Because the Bible's speaking to me in generalities. Holy Spirit, I need you to speak specifically to me about my child, about my marriage, about my job, about this crisis, because I don't know what to do. And that's where the Holy Spirit comes in and he reveals things to you that are specific to your situation. He knows everything. He's omniscient. He's all-knowing. He knows the beginning from the end. Listen to me. In our human capacity, all we can do is make the best decision we have based on our current situation and the past. But the Holy Spirit knows where you'll be 20 years from now. And the Holy Spirit is able to say, hey, I know what you're going to need in the future. I know where you're going to be in the future. The Holy Spirit's not basing his decision on today and yesterday. He's basing in his decision on, I see you in 20 years from now. Trust me on this. I got you. I got you. I know where you're going to be. I know what you're going to need. Listen to me. I got the specifics on this. The Holy Spirit wants to communicate to you. He wants to reveal things to you. And that's what scripture says. The Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit wants to reveal these things to you. The second purpose of the Holy Spirit, he wants to teach He wants to counsel us, and he wants to help us. John chapter 14, verse 26, it says, But the Comforter, who is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things. He will bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said to you. Jesus literally called the Holy Spirit your helper. What do you need help with today? What do you need help with? Because there is not a subject in the world that the Holy Spirit is not an expert on. The Holy Spirit wants to help you. He wants to counsel you. He wants to instruct you. In John chapter 15, verse 26, it says, The helper, speaking of the Holy Spirit, will guide us into all truth. He convicts us of sin. 
The Holy Spirit is not trying to condemn you. The Holy Spirit does not want you to go to hell. He is not trying to point out your sin so that you'll go to hell. The Holy Spirit is trying to convict you, not condemn you, so that he can say, hey, I can give you power to overcome this. You don't have to live in this bondage. You don't have to live in this. I can help you to live a victorious life. The Holy Spirit wants to help us. So why are we so afraid of him? Why do we avoid him? Why do we run from him? I feel like the enemy, I feel like the enemy has so misrepresented and so misconstrued the Holy Spirit because he understands if we get a hold of the reality of what he can offer us, it'd change our lives. It'd change our marriage. It'd change our families. It'd change our situations. But the Holy Spirit wants to reveal these things to you. The Holy Spirit wants to teach you and counsel you and guide you. The third thing that the Holy Spirit wants to do, he wants to speak to you. Do you know the Holy Spirit has a voice and can speak? In Mark chapter 13, verse 11, it says, when they arrest you and hand you over, don't worry beforehand what you are to say, but you say whatever's been given you in that hour, for it's not you who speaks, but it is the Holy Spirit. In Acts chapter 13, verse 2, it says, As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said. Who said? The Holy Spirit said. Separate Barnabas and Saul for me for the work which I've called them. I want you to understand this morning, the Holy Spirit wants to communicate with you. He wants to help you. He wants to counsel you. He wants to give you advice that no counselor, that no banker, that no doctor, that no lawyer, that no, n- nobody can give you. The Holy Spirit wants to speak specific to your situation, to your details. He wants to help you. He wants to counsel you. The question is, will you let him? Because you can reject it. You can reject the Holy Spirit. We can, in- we can insult him. We can offend him. So we can reject him. The Holy Spirit's sitting here trying to help us, and, and we're scared of him. We're afraid of him. We don't know. And so we just, we just reject him. I want you to understand the Holy Spirit wants to help you. I believe there are Christians who have been in church for years. They've been saved for years, and they have never been taught how to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit. You can speak to me in Spanish all day long. And you can have a genuine desire to communicate to me. But if you're speaking in Spanish, past hola, como se llama, that's all I know. That's it. You can talk to me all day. You can be passionate about trying to help me. But if I don't understand the language, you can't communicate with me. And until we become sensitive to the language of the Holy Spirit, to the voice of the Holy Spirit, we're going to miss what he's saying. How does that happen? It happens as you develop a relationship with him. You, you don't know his voice up front when you're first saved. You know his voice, but it, you're not real sensitive to it. It could be him, might be him, I'm not sure. But the more you begin to spend time with him, you know there's one voice, I don't care where I'm at, I don't care what's going on. When my mama called me, I knew her voice. I knew the tone. Priscilla Gwen England. I knew I was in trouble. Hey, babe. I knew she was just calling to tell me, I love you. There was an intimacy. Same thing with my dad. There's an intimacy. I know their voice. I can hear one word from my dad. He's not an emotional person, but one word, and I know if he's mad. I know if he's frustrated, I know when he's happy, one word, because I've learned to hear his voice. And when you spend time with the Holy Spirit, you will learn to hear his voice. You will know immediately, "Mm, that hurts me. You'll know immediately, I'm so pleased with you, I'm so proud of you. That's the power of recognizing the voice of the Holy Spirit. Fourth thing that the Holy, this is the fourth purpose of the Holy Spirit. He's our intercessor. He, 
He is praying for you. He is interceding for you. John chapter 13 verses, I'm sorry, John 16, 13 through 15. It says, when we don't know how to pray, the spirit himself prays for us. In Romans chapter 8 verse 26, it says, in the same way that the spirit helps us in our weakness, when we don't know what we ought to pray, the Spirit himself intercedes for us. Have you ever found yourself in a situation and you say, my God, I don't even know how to pray. I literally don't know what to say. I don't know how I'm supposed to respond. I don't know how I'm supposed to react. God, I don't know what to pray. Help me. And scripture says that when we find ourselves in those situations, we can ask the Holy Spirit and he will begin to pray for us and intercede for us on our behalf. The fifth thing, the fifth purpose of the Holy Spirit is he gives us power. <laughs> Acts chapter 1 verse 8 says, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Do you know the Holy Spirit, his, he, it's his power that enables us to live a victorious life. It's the power of the Holy Spirit that helps us overcome sin. It's the power of the Holy Spirit that breaks the chains of bondage and addiction. I'm all about going to seminary. I'm all about Christian college. I'm all about learning as much as you can. But seminary, it, it's not compared to the power of the Holy Ghost. It's not Christian college that breaks the chains. It's the power of the the Holy Spirit that will come and destroy the yoke of the enemy. Information is powerful. Education is powerful. But the Holy Spirit is 10 times exponentially more powerful. I would rather have the anointing on me than have 10 degrees because that's the power of the Holy Spirit. He will enable us with power. The sixth purpose of the Holy Spirit is he gives us gifts. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 4 says, there's all kinds of different gifts, but it's the same spirit that distributes them. Verse 12 says, what we have received is not the spirit of the world. It's the spirit from God, so that we may understand what God has freely given us. And that's what I want to know. What gifts has God freely given me? And am I using them? Do I even know about them? If I don't know they exist, if I don't know he's offering me gifts, I may be missing them. According to scripture, there's a variety of gifts that the Holy Spirit wants to give us. The gift of healing, the gift of prophecy, the gift of tongues and interpretations, the word of knowledge, the gift of wisdom, the gift of miracles. Lord, wouldn't that be, a, a, wouldn't that be awful to miss out on the gift of miracles, the gift of discerning of spirits? And it's the Holy Spirit that gives us these gifts. My question for you this morning is what gifts has he given you? If I were to just go around the room and say, everybody tell me one gift the Holy Spirit has given you, do you know what your gift is? Do you know? Are you using it? Are you using the gift that the Holy Spirit has given you? Because scripture says he has given us these gifts. What if somebody sitting in this room right now has the gift of healing and you don't even know it and people all around you sick, sick and dying, and in disease, and you got the gift of healing, and you're sitting there not even using it because you didn't know you had it. The Holy Spirit has given us gifts. It is our job to receive, to gain access to those gifts. And you know what you do? You just say, Holy Spirit, show me. Reveal it to me. I want to close with this. How many of you are married? There's several of you. Wow. That's good. So the day you got married, you stood before the preacher or the uh, court and said, I, I do, and, and you got married, and in first service, I said you did the deed, and, and it's consummated, it's official, you are married. And the, yeah, somebody say amen, amen. <laughs> You're married. And I see you 40 years later, and I say, hey, how's your husband doing? I don't know, I hadn't talked to him. I hadn't talked to him since the day I got married. I'm not sure. Do you know how many Christians limit the Holy Spirit to an event or an occasion? 
And they say, no, I, I went to youth camp when I was 12 years old. I got filled with the Holy Spirit then. Well, honey, you're 46 now. What has the Holy Spirit done with you in that 30 years? Do you, do you hear what I'm saying? The Holy Spirit wants to have a daily relationship with you. And that will not happen unless you give him time Unless you give him access, unless you're intentional and deliberate to lean into his voice. Holy Spirit wants to help you. He wants to help you, okay? I want you to stand with me this morning. The Holy Spirit wants to reveal things to you. He wants to help you, he wants to counsel you, and he wants to teach you. The Holy Spirit wants to speak to you, and he wants to speak through you. Part of the problem is that we have too many people speaking on behalf of the Holy Spirit, but the Holy Spirit didn't speak to them. And I need people who are hearing, hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit and then speaking on his behalf. Don't you say the Spirit of God told you if he didn't, because there's consequences to that. But the Holy Spirit wants to speak to you. He wants to intercede for you. He wants to empower you. And he's got gifts that he wants to give you. My author call this morning is so simple. So simple. Is there anybody here this morning who would be willing to raise their hand and say, Gwen, I am facing a situation right now and I need the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Hands going up all over the place. Holy Spirit, I don't know what to do. I literally don't know what to do. Would you reveal it to me? Would you show me? Would you teach me? Would you advise me? Would you counsel me? Holy Spirit, are there gifts that you have for me and I just have overlooked them? I've missed them. Holy Spirit, I need you. The Holy Spirit will speak specific to you. He'll speak specific to your situation if you'll allow him to. I'm going to say probably 40 people raised their hand this morning. I'm going to ask you to do one more step of faith. I want you to come forward. Because there is something that happens in the heavens when we take a step of faith. To, God honors it. The heavens see it. You don't have to be afraid. You don't have to be ashamed. There's nothing to be embarrassed about. You know what you ought to be embarrassed about? is saying, I've got a problem, but I'm too proudful. I'm too prideful to come get help. The Holy Spirit wants to help you this morning. He wants to empower you this morning. He wants to assist you and help you and teach you. Would you let him do that? Would you let him do that this morning? Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yes. Holy Spirit, you're welcome here. Holy Spirit, we need you. Have your way and do your will. Reveal yourself. Show us your glory, Lord. Lord, our ears are open right now. I believe you're going to speak to your people. I believe you're showing us things. You're revealing things to us. You're saying, go this way, not that way. Lord, I believe by the power of the Holy Spirit, you're going to open doors supernaturally. And you're going to sovereignly shut down some doors. You're going to close down some relationships because they're not in your will. Lord, I thank you for the gifts, the gifts that you have. Lord, release the gifts to your people this morning. In Jesus' name, I thank you for doing it, Lord.